What's up, family? Welcome, welcome, welcome back. I know y'all haven't seen my face in a while, but you know, today we're joined by a special guest. And you know, I believe in talking to people, not talking about people or talking at people. Um, so the young lady from the now viral clip, the Fresh and Fit, um, and Nick Fuentes, she'll be joining us today. Um, so yeah, so she doesn't have to talk to just a logo. Uh, I turned my camera on, so obviously I need a haircut and stuff, but it is what it is. We're going to keep it pushing. Um, but the song that you guys just heard, it's called um, Bambule. And I wanted to start the stream here for several reasons. Number one, I posted it on the community tab saying that um, it's a beautiful thing when black men are in harmony when black men are working together. I think that's a visual representation of the beauty that we can create, um, the harmony that we can create. But also, um, Bambule was inspired by um, some protests that happened in South Africa some years back, um, resulting in the death of a kid. And the protests were about domestic violence. But the song kind of is a call um, for Africans throughout the diaspora, at home and abroad, to, um, to preserve and remember Africa, right? As you guys know, I'm a Pan-Africanist. I believe that we're all connected. Uh, and that's part of the foundation of this conversation for me because, like you saw in the case study I posted yesterday, I think there are a lot more elements to this than we are acknowledging. And I'm hoping by actually having a conversation with this uh, young lady that we can get to the core of what's happening and what it, this means for us and where we go from here. A while back, I, I talked about how, you know, in this journey of emotional authenticity, 
sometimes we emote the incorrect emotion, right? And I think as men in particular, a lot of our anger, a lot of our um, rage sometimes is fear and sadness. Um, it's misrepresented fear and sadness. And I think a lot of black men were angry about the fresh and fit Nick Fuentes situation, particularly the picture of um, this young lady kissing the uh, white supremacist on the cheek. Kind of like uh, one of my mentors said, he said, you know, men struggle with power, you know, as far as that's part of our insecurity, power and weakness, that dynamic. And women struggle with shame. And it's interesting because whenever men are um, triggered by women, we result to shame. And whenever women are triggered by men, they result to questioning our power, right? You got a little dick energy, that type of stuff. Um, and I think we can kind of walk that back. I think we can um, approach these conversations, these important conversations from a different place, from a place of authenticity. And my number one goal for tonight is to demonstrate that. So in the case study from last night, uh, and make sure y'all watch it if you haven't already. But in, in the case study from last night, I talked about how we have an appetite, um, especially on social media for dysfunction. We have an appetite for um, shock and awe, you know, car crashes. And we inadvertently support the things and the people that we claim to hate, right? And in this case, it's Dick Fuentes, it's Fresh and Fit. Um, back then it was uh, Just Pearly Things. And I talked about how the reality of it is fame and infamy are the same thing these days. So whether you are talking or hashtagging these people because you like them and you support them, or you're talking about and hashtagging these people because you hate them and you despise them, you are supporting them. And unfortunately, I think as a community, we spend more time and energy supporting the things we hate and the things that are working against us versus the things that are for our own good. For instance, um, I think you'll find that Cynthia G's audience wouldn't be as large as it is if she wasn't as bombastic as she is. If she didn't start talking about aborting black male babies, she wouldn't have the audience that she does. Um, when she was pro-black, people kind of passed her over. And it, this goes for most content creators, whether we're talking about Charleston White, whether we're talking about Fresh and Fit and the whole nine. Unfortunately, right now, the algorithm, AKA people's attention, rewards you being as colorful and as loud and as obnoxious as you can possibly be. And, you know, demand dictates supply. Um, one of the things that is interesting about this whole Nick Fuentes situation. Like I said in the case study, um, he's a 24 year old kid. He knows exactly what he's saying. Um, uh, however, he's an idiot. And I'm not saying he's an idiot because he deserves grace, but he deserves to be ignored. His entire persona is built on being a social pariah, right? His entire persona is built on being the guy we love to hate. And, you know, apparently he, he and Just Pearly Things were uh, mentioned by the recent Texas uh, mall shooter, you know, as part of their inspiration. So it's serious, you know, what you say means stuff. Um, and my position is the more we are tuning in to the nonsense, the more the nonsense spreads. Shout out to Stacy. Uh, yeah, I'm Stacy on YouTube. Um, he was actually the one who, um, his video kind of inspired me to say, okay, let me look at this a little bit. And he also uh, pointed me towards our guest's Instagram, which I was then able to reach out to her and she agreed to join us tonight. And then also shout out to my brother from South Africa, Noble. If you have seen the animation 
Um, he is responsible for that, uh, so shout out to him. If you haven't seen it, again, please, please, please get in the habit of clicking the video tab on the profile, well, on the channel, because YouTube is now promoting our stuff, right? So you have to, whether once a week, whether once a day, just get in the habit, click the video tab, you'll see the case study from yesterday, you'll see the animation, and then you'll see whatever videos that you've missed. Um, so yeah, do that for me. If you're not a member, please consider becoming one at any tier, or um, you can bypass that by super chatting, uh, but you can bypass that by sending the money uh, to support the channel on Cash App, and that's because YouTube takes a cut of Super Chat. So if you really want to support what it is that we're doing here, and like I always say, help keep it sustainable, please support uh, through Cash App. And shout out to William B for the $50 Cash App. I think he sent this yesterday, for, so for the time being, he will be the stream sponsor for tonight. So quick shout out to that brother. All right, so as a Pan-African, um, my whole concern and my whole focus is uh, reestablishing that bridge um, so we can be in community and communication with one another because there is no surviving the white supremacist agenda without that network. And I think a beautiful example of that, um, you know, I'm Nigerian, more specifically, I'm Igbo. And, you know, in the 1960s, the Igbo part of Nigeria tried to break away from Nigeria because a lot of us were being persecuted, a lot of us were being killed. So we formed our own country called Biafra. Here's what's interesting. So our guest today is Haitian. Some people have pointed that out. Um, in some of the reaction videos and stuff. And I, I mentioned it during my case study. I think she's either full Haitian or half Haitian. But Haiti, ironically, was the only non-African country that acknowledged Biafra as a sovereign nation. Not only that, if you guys know a bit of Haiti's history, Haiti was the first independent black nation and especially the first established by former slaves and the first to abolish slavery in the Americas. Um, so that's, that's a pretty big deal that's unfortunately not touched on in school. It's not touched on in our history books. It's not touched on in African history. It's not touched on in American history. And that's why we talk about things like uh, critical race theory. Um, and then the clip that I played in the beginning of um, Daliwanga, um, he's a South African man. Uh, I think he's specifically Zulu. So one of the other nations that I, uh, you know, acknowledged Biafra as a sovereign nation was South Africa, right? Um, Haiti did it officially, South Africa did it unofficially. Um, but if you look into history, there are a lot of those pan-African connections. Um, so this idea that it is an us versus them, but the us and them is within blackness, in my opinion, is an idiotic idea. And I'm hoping that with this conversation in particular, we can start modeling to ourselves and to the world that we can actually talk to each other and not talk at each other or just about each other. Hey. How are you doing? All is well. How are you? So introduce yourself to the audience and um, then talk about what it's kind of been like these last few days. Uh, okay. Well, my name is Glodian Narcisse. Um, I am a Miami, Miami Florida native uh, from Overtown. Um, I've lived in Florida all the way up until high school and then I moved here and there. Um, I have a son, as everybody knows. Uh, and these last couple of days been really, really funky, you know? Um, I never had this much action. Um, I really, I really am, I'm really not a 
internet person, but because I know with what I'm doing with what I want to do as an artist, um, as a creative producer, um, for the projects that I have in mind, um, I have to be on social media and I have to put myself out there. Um, and to let people know that I, I stand for something, you get what I'm saying? Right. Because I'm black, right? Um, I went to my neighborhood community center. So I got a lot of exposure from that, uh, going to college tours and things like that. So I know my history. I know my background to a certain extent because at some point you just get mad and then you stop. Um, because it's so it's so wicked you get what i'm saying um your thought process like to 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 think the way that others think of us is just like whoa how, why right um but at this moment like today today is better um every time that i get to e express myself or tell my part um it gets better it's mm. it, it's it's healing in this this is this is this is the healing for for me um right. as well it, it's not just hiding behind words um hiding behind pictures you get what i'm saying like mm. i like real deal things so if, right. if you're gonna call me out let's 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 be real about it However, um, like you said before, don't talk at me. Don't talk at me because you don't get results like that. Um, never. Uh, it's it's been it's been proven in the school system. But anyway, mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna yeah. dial back. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. So so you know, talk to me about you know you know they say hindsight is twenty twenty. So when you're looking back. First of all, explain how you even found your way on Fresh and Fit, and then um, what happened. Now, go ahead. Okay. What happened? So they usually DM. So they have somebody DM you, right? Um, and then you confirm, and then the producer has to uh, approve, right? Um, and once he approves, you're in. Um, so, like I said, this is my third time. My second, my, my first two times were conversations about relationships. What, 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 and, and what I mean is, you know how Myron goes on his rant about women and how he feels about them and his, and his perspective. Um, so I was ready to come with mine. You get what I'm saying? I wasn't prepared to talk about, to, to talk about social politics at all. So, um, you get there, you get what I'm saying? You do all of the things, waivers, everything. Um, and they take you on the balcony, right? They show you around, you feel me? Uh, you get to do the, the thing. It, it, the, when you think about it, the whole thing is just like to set you up, right? Okay, so mm. you, you see the view because what woman doesn't want to see a view? You get what I'm saying? Drinks, right? Um, and then now you get to take a picture. So when the, 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 the group picture is before, all group pictures are before the, the episode. Mm. So um, what happens next? The group picture. So I see Nick, but, and, I'm, and I'm wondering like, who is this person? But like I said on my live, like I wasn't vocal. I, I didn't I didn't say it out loud. It was just like me peeping. You get what I'm saying? Because I really don't I really don't know. Um, and I'm an observer. I really didn't talk until to, 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 to anybody for real until we got into the space. And you get what I'm saying? Cordial. Um, but I have to figure out who I'm around. I don't know. We don't know each other. We're, we're literally just getting to know each other in this space. So um, we gather around, we taking a picture. I'm still wondering like, what's up? The way they position the girls is to you who who gonna have who got booty, who got breasts, all this. You get what I'm saying? So um I'm noticing 
the girl in the blue, she's doing her live. Uh, people are like scattered around chatting and talking. So when we sit down and they position us around the table, how they want the audience to see us, um, Nick sits down, still don't know who Nick is. No one introduced Nick. No one said, hey, today today's topic is going to be they laying down ground rules, what you what not to do, what 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 to do. You get what I'm saying? Don't it, it, it's almost if, if it's just like um, I'm the man. So make sure if you're not paying attention, if it, treating us like sluts, <laughs> you know, what I'm like their mindset. Uh, so wait, so the, the picture with, um, the kiss on the cheek, did that happen before or after? It was after. Mm, okay. We'll get to that. Keep going. Yes. So still don't know who Nick is. We get into it. Um, and we find out who Nick is when he introduces himself and tell us what he social polit politics. So we just like, okay, like that's cool. Um, still don't know what we're going to be talking about. Still don't know that Nick is going to be leading this conversation. You get what I'm saying? Myron and, and, uh, fresh aren't speaking as much. They're moder moderators. Didn't know that. So, um, when the show started, I peep Myron and fresh, you know, hi, hi. You see what you did? See what I did? And it's a bunch of black girls around this white guy. And we just looking like, okay, what are we going to get into? So we get into it. And when we get into it, for me, looking at my, looking back at myself, I'm just like, damn, I, I, I was so unprepared and caught off guard about it. It was just like trying to think, trying to, trying to, cause I, 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 I was, it, it was uncomfortable. It was it was painful, and I know the key keys and the laughs, but it's like go with the flow. It, we we did go with the flow. We cooled out. I, I and and that, if that's the words, because that that's the word. You get what I'm saying? So I, I, but at the same time, I was just like still pushing back because I know I was because I know I know me, and I should have been the. But I, I wasn't because at the same time, Nick was saying some things that I, I I had no idea what he was talking about. Things that I I we we have no research, we have nothing, we have not we have no leverage in this conversation. But what we think we know, you get what I'm saying? What what, what mm. from 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 what we think we know. Mm. So I could have so done better. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. For me, I, I'm, I can't speak for everybody around the table. But mm -hmm. for me, I know that I could have done better. I could have articulated better. I could have I could have done way better. I could have nailed it, mm -hmm. but I did it. And that and, and that for me for these couple of days has been really like a tussle and a, a, a tug of war, too, because it's just like, damn. So I so talk about. Yeah, talk about the the N word part, like um, because when when I watched it, um, it did look like you were the main instigator. So how did we get there? I mean, people cut things. I don't I don't know if you watch the whole thing or you just watch what somebody sent you or you just watch what what you got like a like a clip. But mm -hmm. when he came out the gate saying that. Matter of fact, Myron was said, ask, would you date outside your race? Mm -hmm. I said, no. Matter of fact, he they asked us, what's our name? Where we from? How old, how old are we? And if you want to be nasty, your body count, right? Um, so they asked me if I had a black, if I had a black man. And I said, yes, I do. And it was like, well, that that negates what his theory was on black women wanting white men and I, I i just picked up on that so i'm like okay we go around the table they everybody's telling if they got a man or not um and then he busts out the gate with i want white babies and i say 
I don't like dating outside my race either because I want black babies. So to me, we agree to disagree. We agree on something. To me, we agree on something because mm-hmm. I don't give a, I don't give a, I don't care that you want white babies. That don't, that, that don't mean anything to me. So he went on to talk about IQ. So that theory of IQ, I couldn't articulate on that because I don't have any information on that. I didn't read up on that. I didn't do nothing on that. So how can I talk about something that I don't know? That makes no sense to me. So yes, I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to listen. I have to because I, I, I'm unprepared. So, mm-hmm. okay. Then we kind of shift it a little bit. Um, to, I guess, lighten the load, but then it got back into, it got into Trump. And then we started talking about Trump. And then that's how we started talking about Hitler. And then that's when they were talking about females. Uh, they they consent. Like if, if, a, if a guy has this type of status, a, feed, a, a, a man could grab her pussy or something like that and to that extent. So mm-hmm. we roll and we roll and we roll into he said it was comments. It was after a comment. After this comment, uh, somebody asked him about uh, black people coming to his his events or or how, what is his numbers in with, with with black people or something something to that nature. Um, and he was like, "Yeah, blacks." And he kept saying blacks. And he kept saying blacks. I wasn't the first person to ask him why he was saying blacks, but I noticed he kept saying blacks. So I was like, "Yeah, why are you saying blacks? You get what I'm saying?" Because I'm I'm listening. So he was like, yeah, because I can I can have another word. No my, nobody will believe me. I wasn't thinking the word was gonna be nigger. Cause I don't I don't know to the extent of how far he is he could go. I don't know, I don't really I never watched none of his videos. I never until after the the until after the whole photo thing so it's just like mm. yeah my bad but he didn't give me white supremacists because i feel like if a, if if you a strong white power I, you ain't even sitting in the room with black people and if you are you disrespecting them from the gate but that's my my perception you get what i'm saying i'm not privy mm. to this new stuff because i'm not so i'm not um uh, um uh, socially politically aware and I should be, that's on me. But like I said, that that's another thing for another time. But, and then he, we got into the N word. Mm-hmm. And then I was, I, my, my nergic reaction was puss ass cracker. Cause that's what you say. That's the, that's what you do. You jump up and you slap the shit out of this cracker. But at the same time, I can't jump up and, sh- and slap the shit out of this cracker. I can use my words, but I don't even fucking have words. So now I got to play it off. Like I'm, I, I, to it, you, I, you, you, what do you do when you're in that in that position? People could say whatever they want to say, but we were definitely what people said, railroaded and caught off guard because that's how I feel. At the end mm. of the day, smoke when when the smoke clears at the table. So, I mean, if you want to veer off to the to the photo, we can. But at mm. the table, no, I didn't. What, 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 We'll get, we'll, get to, we'll get to the photo. So one, one of the things you said that stuck out to me, you said um, from the conversation, it didn't strike you that he was a white supremacist because a white supremacist would either not sit in the same room or um, they would be a lot more, you know what I'm saying, bold and loud and the whole nine. So what, what, is, what, what does an actual white supremacist look like and how did Nick not fit that description in your eyes? um shaved head blue eyes like skin head like in there with his all his tattoos on like with it i don't know if you ever seen american x but mm-hmm. that like that's what i that's what i see as white supremacy when i when i when when i saw that movie because mm-hmm. it, it it's it's loud it's bold it's out there However, that's not Nick. You get what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So not playing chess in that plan only because I feel like 
why am I, how, how, why am I at this tape? Like, why, even when Myron put on the hood, I, I even asked him, what is, what, why? Why are you doing this? Like, what is your purpose? Yeah. It threw me. The whole thing threw me. It, 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 I was yeah. thrown. But at the end of the day, um, my, my, my mistakes were not having discernment in that moment, not being vocal, not saying, saying the things that I, I, I need to say in that moment yeah. and, and letting Nick know that no, and, and, and not having to be all up in, in, in flames about it, but just letting Nick know, like, no, you cannot say that, that you, you're, you're not allowed to say that you, you, we have boundaries here. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I don't, I don't agree with your ideologies and you don't, you don't, you don't agree with mine, but however, that that's, this is where I draw the line. If you don't really want what's coming next after that. So, mm. so let, b- before, me. yeah, before, before we, um, cause I, I want to break it down for you. So next time, if something like this happens, you'd be more prepared, but, um, what, whether from your perspective or from other women's perspective, what is the goal of appearing on a um, on a channel like Fresh and Fit? Like, what what do you look to get out of it by appearing on their channel? Well, I was ready to come and go back and forth with Myron. Honestly, like I was ready. I was my I was mentally prepared to just give it to him in a way of. You can have your opinion, but you see how you and I are, are speaking. You see how you set up a, 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 a safe space for some for someone. And I didn't see that show. I, I didn't, like I said, didn't didn't do my research. I didn't. I don't. Wa- I'm not a. I don't watch it like that. I just know what the what it, what what it how it's set up for for women. So I was gonna come in there and and let them know like that it's messed up how you all come and, and this is not a conversation. This is, mm-hmm. this is some bullshit that y'all own because you, you, you set mm-hmm. women up to look stupid. You set women up to look crazy. I don't, whatever shade of skin of color they are, but this, mm-hmm. this is that it's like we're plotting behind the scenes and setting this thing up. That's, mm-hmm. that's, that's weird to me. But, that, but let me, let me ask you, let me ask you this though. Um, I think some people's, hesitation with hearing that is the fact that you had been on there three times, right? And they're going to have the question of, well, if you've been on there more than once, you have an idea of what it is that they do, right? They're not interested in blackness. They're not interested in progress. Um, Myron's mind is not going to be changed so either there's a sense of like you enjoy the back and forth, the sport of arguing, or there is something else that you're looking to get from either the exposure or, or you know, the, the leveraging the connects or the contacts that you make. So like what was the thing that kept you coming past just maybe today I'll get Myron? Well... Like I said, for for what I do, or for what I want to do as an artist, uh, I have to put myself out there, and I didn't put myself out there at, at, at this point in time on a on a on a platform that I should have. I haven't even watched in a year, so I didn't. I didn't even know that Myron was going to even come out with a sheet. Like I wasn't ready for him to be racist you get what i'm saying like i wasn't prepared for those things i was prepared for him to try to shut me down with the things that he wrote in his book about how women deserve less like you get what i'm saying like mm-hmm. why am i doing this you get what i'm saying mm-hmm. it, it's it's because i need to let people know what i stand for mm-hmm. i'm 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 of so, course, so th- this this is of course it's for it's of mm-hmm. course it's for connectivity because every time and time again I met beautiful women I met women mm-hmm. who are 
when you get on the show, you, they look dumb, but they're not dumb. Like we we have conversations. It's it's, it's sociable. You it's a it's a mm -hmm. social moment. So it to me, it's not about. It's not all about Myron because I know that I'm gonna come in with my position. You get what I'm saying? So I think I think what's what's difficult about that is like. <clears throat> Like I said, conversation has turned into a sport, and especially the conversation between men and women, and particularly the conversation between black men and women. Um, so we ignore the things that connect this conversation, for instance, to the race conversation. And that's why despite how Myron talks, the way he moves, um, a lot of people would not assume that he also would throw on a KKK mask. Um, so, so for me, I think larger than just preventing you from doing this again, my bigger question is how do we prevent so many women being drawn by just the popularity and the clout associated with their platform simply because it's large? Well, for one, it starts with self, right? Mm. So my biggest lesson in this and advice would be know where you going. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Don't just be going. Right. Know, 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 know yourself enough to know that I don't belong in this space. This space mm -hmm. doesn't associate with what I got going on. I'm not going to do that. It's like for me, I put my hand in the fire. I got burned. That's on me. However, my lesson is know, know where you're going mm -hmm. and not even know where you're going because I knew that's, that's not because I knew, but don't attach what I want to do with something that I'm really not about. Mm. I talked to my coworker today um, because he showed me, he wrote on a, we, we, we have a, we have a huddle. And he wrote on his 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 uh, his pad. Uh, I don't I don't remember his name, but he's a YouTuber. Uh, it's Stratosphere men Stratosphere. I, I remember that part. Um, mm -hmm. Had their perspectives of what happened. Um, mm -hmm. And but by the end of the conversation, uh, my coworker told me that. If you if you ain't about that, don't 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 speak on it, um, and don't don't put don't associate yourself with it, because perspective is everything. And if perspective is everything, and if I wanna I want to present myself a certain way, then I have to practice what I preach. I have to walk in what I say. You get what I'm saying? Um, in this very moment, it doesn't it doesn't look like that because I didn't I didn't do that. I didn't present mm -hmm. I didn't present that. So that's what I got out of that conversation. Um, in these in these couple of days, they they have been been very reflective on who I am on the inside um, and what I want to associate myself with moving forward. Uh, whether people still like me or not uh i still have to move forward and 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 knowing that okay so next time like i did this time um i made sure that the next space that i'm in um is it, it's it's going to be encouraging it's it's going to be warm it's going to feel safe uh because if it doesn't feel like those things then i don't need to be there because now i'm putting myself in a position to 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 be in that situation that I just was in. So talk about the kiss. After he said everything that he said, after he did everything that he did, after you got a taste of kind of who he was, what um, inspired you to show love in that particular way to him? Well, for one, in that in that moment, 
I didn't think about it. I didn't I didn't think about what that would look like to anybody else. I I didn't I, I just I didn't I didn't think about it. I was and to me it was just like oh so oh so you don't like me? All right, cool. Cracker. Like it, it it's you don't you don't you don't uh, you don't offend me, but you offend my people. Like and I know that makes people cringe, but I don't follow Nick. I don't after this, I, I looked at a clip and was like, all right, I'm 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 good. Like I don't after this, me and Nick are not gonna have drinks. After this, me and Nick aren't gonna lay down in the bed. After this, I don't know, I, he's not my bestie. Like this was just like to be like, so what, cracker? I don't care if you don't like me or not, but you still for for what and for whatever his motives was to still put put your own, touch me. How about that? Um and because white men like black women, but anyway, um yeah so it, it wasn't me thinking about what it would look like from the outside okay so i i don't want to preach to you so instead i'm gonna have you Tell me. no 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 i i want you to ask me questions right ask me based on um so how do what you, everything that happened okay how do i feel about it yeah like how do you feel about any of like even me responding back like mm. i because i i i i hear the accountability like i in in, in spots you're like mm -hmm. okay so you what you i gotta hold you accountable for this sis but you're not mm. doing it in a way that is making me feel attacked you're sure. doing it in the way of of love because we look alike I, I never, and, and and then I'm gonna ask you, but I never knew that it was this deep of a division, even with the terms being used against me. It's just like, what? Um, and then a, a light bell just went off in my head. I, I hear as, as a child, when you grow up, um, my family is very family oriented, but after a while, you know, family dispersed and we do our own things. But growing up, we were very family oriented. However, my mom's side of the family are black Americans. She's from South Carolina, born and raised. You get what I'm saying? She moved here to Florida with everybody packed up in the car to South Carolina, you know, and it was still segregation. And, and when they came to Florida, it was still segregation, but black and white so blacks it was still it was still family it was still um village you get what i'm saying that's the word i want to say it was still village like so when my dad came to america they had that attraction it pissed my my uncles and my my grandfather it pissed them off I just hear stories, so I never knew why until right now. It's like, oh, okay, so I'm considered this. I'm not considered. I I didn't I didn't realize how how deep it goes, which is. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, how did did I piss you off? Like, let me know because. <laughs> I'm I'm a, I'm explain it. I'm a, I'm gonna break it down for you. Um, number one, I want to say that our I wanted to say our education failed us, like the education system failed us, but it didn't because it was created to keep us misinformed, right? Mm -hmm. And part of that misinformation is us not being able to connect some of those dots as far as like white supremacy, as far as um, the, um, the white psyche as it relates to how they see us. And that's why I think a lot of people, including yourself in this situation, <clears throat> um, don't initially see how deep these things are from the N-word situation to the kiss and the whole nine. Um, when I saw it, I, I, I wasn't angry, I was disappointed. And the reason I was disappointed was when I went to your profile, for instance, I saw a picture of you with the black power fist up. 
And apparently, at some point, you had the picture kissing Nick. And it was such a contradiction. And on YouTube, for instance, um, being quote unquote pro-black has become a joke, right? Um, a lot of people, including black folks, um, refer to pro-blacks as, you know, hypocrites, right? Hypocrites who don't really know their history. They just like the, um, the character, like to play that part of being pro-black, but they don't actually know what being pro-black is. And I think, again, with your fist up and with your presentation and the whole nine, it's like a superficial pro-blackness. But when it's time to demonstrate how Number one, you actually deeply love yourself and your people, and you identify the things that want to cause harm to yourself and your people. It was like the substance wasn't there. So it, I didn't expect you to know who Nick Fuentes is, because most people don't. Um, but during the podcast, after he said everything that he said, um, I expected some kind of light bulb to go off like, hold up. If this man had it his way, my son would be his slave, not his golfing buddy. If this man had it his way, I would be his bent winch, not his podcast partner. So for the whole night to end with the kiss, it starts seeming like, you're pro-black when it's convenient, but it's really about clout and it's really about being um, viral or being famous. And this was kind of an opportunity too. And I think that's how some people uh, viewed it. Give I me your see, thoughts. I mean, no, I mean, I can see that. That's the conversation of me and my brother had actually, mm -hmm. uh, and he was just like, take it down. And I was just like, okay, because, not just because you're my brother, but, but because I, I, I see you um, mm -hmm. and you're not yelling at me. You're not making me feel ashamed. You're not, you're just telling me like, yo, you fail, you not not even fail. Um, you you lacked here. You like you lack there. You lack here, um, and just do better. Just just if, if whenever you have the opportunity to have an, a a chance to be on a platform, just do better next time. Um, but just don't let this make who you are. And mm -hmm. I appreciated that. Uh, what I what I didn't appreciate is all the all the attacks but the extra stuff yeah yeah the extra mm -hmm. stuff is it 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 gets a little weird because it's just like it's a lot of opinions behind fake pages and yeah that's and 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 to be to be fair to you right um you not being aware of some of the more complex aspects of race relations is not necessarily your fault. It's your fault if you stay unaware after, Correct. especially after this conversation. Correct. But most people, if we're being honest with ourselves, don't understand the nuances. So I'll give you an example. Um, have you ever seen this guy before? Not until I saw um, one of your uh, videos. Mm -hmm. you, you, so, you mentioned him on, 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 a, on a video. I, was it the video that I was in on? Was it that yeah. one? The, mm -hmm. Okay, the case study video. Yeah. Yes. So, so this guy, his name is Jared Taylor. And I think what's interesting about him, he looks very ordinary. He looks like a math teacher. He looks like a history teacher or some shit. But if you can see the book that he's holding in his hand, it's, it's his book. It's called White Identity. Um, I found out about Jared Taylor. Um, I was watching this uh, documentary called Hate Rising. And Hate Rising was uh, by Sergio Ramos. He's a Telemundo reporter. And he was going around the country and interviewing like white supremacists. He was interviewing um, people like skinheads, the people who look like white supremacists, but also people like this. And the interview during the documentary that stuck out to me was his interview because 
when he was sitting down with um, uh, Sergio, he said that the upward mobility of any subgroup of people is a direct threat to ours. Meaning that in layman's terms, if anybody else does better, we suffer as white people, right? That's what white supremacy is. White supremacy is not obvious. White supremacy is not um, in your face, contrary to popular opinion. It's covert, right? Um, I don't know if you've heard the saying, the greatest trick of the devil is convincing us it doesn't exist or he doesn't exist. That's white supremacy. And the thing that's important, I think, for you to take away from this is when you study history and even in the, uh, during the interview, Nick actually said this, he doesn't mind, um, he's actually attracted to black women. Slave owners were attracted to black women. That's why they raped them so much, right? Um, however, they don't see them as people. They see them as property. They see them as subservient. And on top of that, they rely on that way of seeing us in order to fund their institutions, in order to maintain their supremacy. White people are a minority when you look globally. They might be a majority in America, but when you look globally, they're a minority. So their idea of supremacy is to keep them, themselves on the top and everybody else on the bottom. That's important for you to know because, like you said in one of your videos, because we are a minority in this country, we all represent each other. So seeing you hugged up, buddy-buddy, encouraging somebody who doesn't think you're human, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt people. And especially if after this, you don't take the time to actually learn some of these nuances and make sure that, number one, you're not simply clout chasing and hopping on everybody's platform because they have a large platform, but also that when you speak, it means something. And it's not just to argue with somebody. It's not just to, I got you moment, because that's what Fresh and Fit have created. They've created a circus, right? And if you participate in that circus, and you might not know, even if you don't know you're participating in the circus, for all intents and purposes, you're also a clown in that circus. And as a sister, as a black woman, I know a lot of people were saying, oh, she's Haitian. No, she's a black woman. It's like I said, our histories are tied. And your mom is African American, a descendant of slaves. Your dad is Haitian. It's important that you take the time, and I think it'll inform your art as well. You take your time to actually understand some of these more uh, complex, nuanced pieces of black identity. And it's not just a fist in the air or Black Lives Matter or going to marches. That's not what it's about. It's a whole lot deeper than that. I agree. Um, definitely, I wanted to know what what did you see in me mm -hmm. um, versus other people, versus the people that are um, saying nasty things to me, you know, threatening my life yeah. and all those things. Like, what made you reach out to me? Like, what made you say, let me holler at her? What made you say that? Well, number one, um, I think that you are more consistent with the majority of people, right? Like, the majority of unfortunately, people who are seeking a certain thing from fame or being famous um, can find themselves in that type of situation. So you, every other girl who's appeared on Fresh and Fit, the primary goal there, because I, I, I know you understand in the bottom of your heart, there is no convincing Myron. There is no winning at Fresh and Fit. They oh, make yeah. money from bringing y'all on and making a fool out of yourselves. That's their platform. So I wanted to talk to you because I felt like you represented a lot of women who, whether knowingly or unknowingly, were willing to mortgage their self-respect for attention. And I was hoping that through talking to you, maybe the next girl who's thinking about going on Fresh and Fit to sit there and have them make them look stupid might think twice. But also, I think it was also... Um, 
a great example of, like I said in the beginning, how much our education failed us, right? Because the, the Knicks of the world, they've read Mein Kampf. They, they know all the quotes and all the stats that support the way that they think. But the regular black person on the street is just trying to survive. They don't know all the details, right? So you just end up being a punching bag for their quote unquote intellectualism. And I'm hoping that through talking to you, it could inspire you and the other yous to take some time, energy, and effort to actually learn some of those things, right? So you're not just, whether in real life or whether on another podcast, you're not just somebody else's punching bag and you're just not positioning yourself to make somebody else look good at your expense. Because at the end of the day, that's what bothered me about the situation. They bring people on to look bad so they can make money. Because they don't care what you think. You just represent everything in black women that's wrong with black women and the reason why Myron and Fresh don't date uh, night Riders, I think is what they call black women. These are not people who care about you. These are not people who care about your son. These are not people who care about your future. And unfortunately, I think as, as people, sometimes we conflate popular with substance. And a lot of times, just because something is popular does not mean it has substance. And I think if we start moving towards the direction of substance and away from popular, we'll stop celebrating car crashes. The last reason I wanted to reach out to you is because I wanted to understand, and I said this during the case study, as black people globally, we are a very forgiving and loving people. And I think part of the reason why white people will never respect us is the fact that they know despite whatever they do, despite whatever they say, we will still seek their validation. We will still seek their love. We will still seek their acceptance. We'll still seek their friendship. And I thought that kissing picture, particularly the fact that it happened after the conversation, was such a perfect example of, damn, what that motherfucker had to say to get you to be like, oh, this isn't somebody I need to be even taking a picture with, let alone kissing in the mouth, uh, uh, on the cheek or some of the other girls twerking on him, right? So part of it is the drug that is clout, and then the other part is education and the lack of education that gets us caught up in these cycles of being exploited for somebody else's entertainment. I agree. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just processing what you said. No, no, process. That's what this is about. Um, but you're right. The com the conversation that I had with my my brother, like I said on my live. just made me understand what I'm what I'm representing when I when right. I go out the same conversation that I had with, with my brother I had with my co-worker who's also a male mm -hmm. um, because I need the perspectives of black men because y'all see what we don't um in the sense of leadership mm -hmm. so when i come across a black male who a black man when i come across a black man who i feel like can lead me somewhere and not whether 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 he's my co-worker whether he's my brother whether he's my man you get what i'm saying um and and show me a different lens and it, it it sit right i'm i'm good with that that's why i don't have i don't have much to say about what you said because it is all it, it is all real it is all true and and now 
what I do is I go and I, I, I look at myself in the mirror because now there is something highlighted in me that I didn't even think was a part of me. So because all of this happened, it's just like, okay, I will go and learn. I will go and sit. I will go and, um, and do my part. So, so the next time you see me, I, I'm, I'm ready. Uh, um, so talk, talk to us about, cause you know, you explained that your appearance or your constant appearance on Fresh and Fit was to build your network, to build your following for the thing that you ultimately want to do. So talk to me about the art. Like, what is it exactly that you actually want to do? Um, so art therapy, uh, right now, uh, I'm working on a project called Mania. Uh, my grandmother, uh, she suffered from mental illness. So, um, and you know, that's not really something it's, it's, it's talked about now, but it, it, it's not really prevalently. It's not a conversation. It's not a, it's not something that we just sit down and we talk about around the table eating dinner. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, even if we are sitting around the table eating dinner. Fact. So, um, me and my cousin, who's a male, um, <laughs> Okay, so me and my cousin, um, we had a conversation and um, we were going back and forth of, about how each other, how, how we felt or, or, or I brought up something about like how I felt and sometimes I have these high highs and low lows and um, just don't know, some, just, just all over the place sometimes. Mm -hmm. So he was, he broke it down because he's older than me. So he let we had grandma in stages. So he got grandma when, you know, she was up and on her feet and things like that. And I got my grandma uh, when she wasn't as well, but she was still vibing anyway. Mm -hmm. So I said that to say, um, mania is about the maniac. It's about, literally about us um and how we have to operate in mania and chaos every day like we are all maniacs we are all many men we are all going through some type of mania so my project is to visually show um what that looks like breaking it down um <clears throat> almost Beyonce's visuals inspire me. So it's not a Beyonce visual. However, mm -hmm. it, 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 it is a visual to feel. To when you, when you don't know what to do, you have something. Everybody doesn't read. Everybody isn't picking up a book. People are listening to things. So to see a visual of, of just something to make you feel good when you are, when you feeling like you're, you're about to go to the extre extreme, yeah. Um, because I know that we all get to the ledge um, and some of us jump and I just I just want to create a I've always wanted to create a space for black people and which is why this is like like you said it's contradicting because how but all before before the photo that is who i am I, it is definitely beyond a fist in the air um but that is just my art the way that i dress is art like i i'm i'm i'm, I'm a style I, I i'm a stylist i'm a creator however i'm trying to see i'm i'm trying to see what that looks like for me but right now what i'm what i'm working on is that project um and is there anything you can show us you can um you know to kind of demonstrate where you're going so if you go on my instagram mm -hmm. i it's a short clip and i'm in all white my hair is wrapped um and to me what i it it, it, it expresses freedom and that's mm -hmm. the peace and mania is going to be called, I'm going to give y'all something, it's going to be called reflective because you have to, 
be able to reflect even in moments like this i have to write that stop so it yeah so yeah keep talking so yeah so you have to be able to reflect um even when it looks nasty even when it's sticky even when the world is telling you you a bad wench coon like you have to be able to go within yourself like like i said there's no real excuse i did it it happened and I should have done it. Con I, I didn't. A matter of fact, I I did I, unconsciously. It was just like, like I said, I was I was. It was ego. It was it was it wasn't me thinking about my community. It was me like trying to make him feel some type of way, even though even not even realizing he don't even feel no type no type of way because, like you said, I am I am his 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 rag doll. I am his mammy. I am. I am I am nothing. So to to look back on it and to see that I display I display myself like that. Yeah, I, I deserve what I'm getting. However, what I don't deserve is threats of, on my life or yeah. saying my, my 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 son talking about my son and what my parenting is going to be like. First of all, yes, my son does know about the photo. I as soon as Y'all went on as soon as the bots or the whomever people that are hiding, they they went and 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 took it there. That same day, I was like, yo, okay, how am I gonna present this to my son? So I had to come first up because he is on social media. When he gets screen time, he is on social media. <clears throat> so um, yeah, I asked him did he if he knew who he was, because you're on the internet more than me. Like literally, my like I said, my life is not the internet. So because I took I, I took in a, a a stupid opportunity, right? Some things some things you just don't do. Like all money ain't good money, right? So um I have to I have to come to my child and 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 see how and 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 see where he at mentally. Like I'm not a <laughs> I shouldn't have did what I did. And so now it's like, I'm not begging, but it almost feels like I am fighting for my life because mm -hmm. I know that I'm not that person. Um, and I do have a lot of work to do. I do have a lot of studying to do. Uh, I, I know these things. This highlighted that for me. And it, I'm not taking this as an L. For me, this is a win for me because now it was a teachable moment you know, we got to put it all out on the table. Ain't nobody harboring anything. Not for me. Like I, I, mm. I, I listen. The only thing is, is the is the pulling up and all of that type of stuff. Because then it, it goes to another level. Now I feel like I have to protect myself against everybody. So now it's me against the world. And I and, and yes, I put myself in this position to be be it me against the world. But at the same time. Where is all this camaraderie when we really, 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 really need it? Really, really need it. Like, mm. come on. Like, let me let me ask you this. Um, let's say we knew each other at some point in your life before this, right? When do you think would have been the best time to? grab you and explain to you some aspect of this to prevent this from happening in the first place? Is it, you know, the young version of you? Is it you right before you went on set? Is it you um, right before you, you got reached out to by Fresh and Fit? At what point can we prevent another you from having this happen to them in the future? Um, there's, 
there's always <clears throat> a moment. <clears throat> there's always a red flag. You get what I'm saying? And if you're not paying attention and and thinking that like if you're if 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 you're constantly like in an ego state of mind, you're not gonna pay attention to a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So pay attention to what you feel on the inside. Cause the whole time I felt something, but then I was like, I'm gonna push past this because I'm gonna do this. You get what I'm saying? Like I'm a, and, for, I, and, and for, for some odd reason, I'm just like, I'm going to do this. Go on a, don't go against what you feel. Don't go against yourself. Um, whole time it was just like, it was, it was this thing. It was this thing. And I didn't, I just, I moved around it. I just was like, all right, I'm going to do it because I want to do it. You get what I'm saying? I, I want to mm -hmm. do it. I want to, if I'm going be on a platform then let me let me go um and because it was something that i watched i watched I, and that was my last episode of watching it and it was when i don't remember the episode but it it was what doing what they do making women look stupid and then uh i was like i want to be on the show and because i had i felt like i had something to say you get what i'm saying mm. um but then i was shut down so this time around, and it, it, like I said, it's been a year. This time around, it came to me. So I'm like, all right, because I ain't go. I was when it got shut down. I was like, cool. Like I don't give a fuck. Like it's not that deep to me. Hmm. So when it came back around to me, I was like, all right, I'll do it. Like all right, I'll hmm. do it. Because it came back around. I even was like, am I even gonna get past the producer? Because the last time it was just like, oh, oh, we. Because I. Be, because I the first the, the first time I got on there was because it was somebody I knew who was casting for the show mm. and they needed somebody and they was like can you do and I was like all right um and I went I'm not, and then it, the second time they needed somebody and I went so this time it came to me you know it, it, it always for me but like I wanted to go and then I wasn't able to go. And then this time it came to me and I was like, all right, I'm gonna do it. Um, and I did. And what I got out of it was, knowing the effect that I have. And that'd be my problem, man. And that'd be my problem. Not, not realizing the impact that I have. Your power, yeah. Yeah, like I, I, almost as if like I'm afraid to flex because if I flex, mm. then my wings gonna be too because and and this is a, this is something that me and my my friend she used to say this to me. She was like, "Lo, why are you so you afraid to flex? Like if you if you if you flex your wings, you gonna everybody just gonna you just gonna but." And it, it, but it feels like that, like to be afraid of your power, like to 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 always have to talk yourself into walking into your power because it's just like, damn. Sometimes I just don't feel good about myself. Sometimes I just don't feel like doing it. Sometimes I'm, I just want to say fuck it all, and I don't want to be nobody, mom. I don't want to be no. I don't want. I, I don't want to be. I, I, I just want to be, but I don't want, I, right now, I just don't want to be strong all the time. And um, I was laxed. I was there, but I wasn't there because You're I didn't say what I was supposed to. Yeah, like, it was epically, mm. <laughs> but at the same time, I still consider it a win for me because mm. uh, like I said, I get to go back and be like, all right, go write about it, journal about it. Um, I'm a, I'm, I, I like to write, I'm a writer. 
Right. And that too, like, it, it, and it, and saying who and saying who I am and standing in that, it, it, it's just like, just because I'm 33, that means absolutely nothing. I think Erica Badu said, I am a grown woman in a little girl's body. I have to, you said it too, women constantly, I don't know, did you say women constantly are, is, is evolving? Like, mm. and we are, and, and that's not, it, it, and I know people want to say it, 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 it's an excuse, but we are, and I have to constantly catch up. Like, I have to constantly be like, okay, girl, okay, girl. Like, I have to constantly check myself. So when I'm being checked, it's just like, damn. All right, I missed that, but mm. I can learn from it. I can move past. I will learn from it. I will move past it. Even mm. changing the words that come out of my mouth and yeah. how I engage with people. So my mind didn't wrap around all, all, all of what that, all of the hate. You get what I'm saying? It was just like, dang. Mm -hmm. Okay, I messed up, but like so think, think, think about think about this for me. Because there there's another version of you somewhere else. And she's okay. um there's a version that's older, there's a version that's younger. What do you think if it went differently when you were younger would have prevented this situation from happening? Okay, so <laughs> Like I said, um, from the begin from from the beginning stages of my life, where I could comprehend, where I could see, where I know who my mom and daddy, who I know who my mom is, and I know who my dad is. Right, my dad was there. Right, and people are gonna say, "Whoa," but yeah, because people, the, what I'm anyway, my dad was was there until I was six, and then things happen with adults, and psh, it, it it's almost as if like. They broke up. My daddy broke up with my mama. He also broke up with me. So there was there was a mm. father figure. However, my father figure was a man who provided a lot of material things. He couldn't give me any type of real knowledge because to me, even as a child, um, being a being around my old being around older people, my great my great aunt, my granddad, uh, my grandma, those people. Uh, they were definitely a part of my life because my mom was a single mom at some point. And I'm not the oldest. I'm the baby. I'm a girl. I have two older brothers, right? So mm -hmm. my oldest brother is incarcerated for the rest of his life. My second oldest brother, he got murdered. So there's me, right? So at some point, my mom did like this. She wrapped herself around me in the sense of she has to protect me at all costs. So I did not see men coming in and out. She, I did not have to go and get her off the corner and and you get what i'm saying get her to get no um my mom provided me with the with the shelter and the life that she felt like i needed in in those times right i'm a 90s baby 1990 right so a lot of my life um i did see i was with my brothers and then i i i i had a lot of males around uh and they were older than me so i was the baby girl i was protected in some type of way and then at some point all that dispersed so my my brother gets locked up you get what i'm saying and then my second older brother dies and then my brother who is um what would we what you would call a non-fba um <clears throat> who's completely uh haitian uh who, who I'm really very connected to because we are both artists uh, because our father, uh, he's an artist. So he leaves, he goes, and he has to do what he has to do with his life because life is happening. So life is happening for everybody and I'm this little girl by myself. So at some point I'm alone and I have to learn how to operate alone and I have to learn how to do things alone. I am sociable because I go to school and I, you know what I'm saying? I put myself in the after school program because my mom, I was just tired of going to my granddaddy house all the time. You get what I'm saying? God, I'm, I'm at this age, I'm in middle school and I don't want to be with this old man. I don't want to do these old man things. You get, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't understand the, the importance of having a grandfather because I didn't want to be alone. Right. So I went to the Overtown Youth Center and I, 
was dancing and I was doing all of the things. And then at some point, um, I had to make a decision in my life about what I wanted to be. So this is high school. Uh, a lot of people don't talk about it, but you need to be preparing in the ninth grade. Like if you, it, it's stressful. It's a stressful time trying to get being in these long lines, not really having the support. Like it, you, you don't really have the full scope. It's just like go to college. You get what I'm saying? But I did have some some type of support, but at the same time, it was it was overwhelming. It was a it was a lot for me. So not really knowing that I am who I am right now. I, I want to be an artist. I was just trying things because my mom. I thought that I was supposed to go to school because that's what everybody said I was supposed to be doing. So I'm doing that. So it's just like you see where I'm going. <laughs> mm-hmm. You see where I'm going. The, it's, it's, it it sounds it sounds like there was a. Um, like going from having the attention of your dad, the attention of your brothers, to then being alone, it almost seemed like a part of you craved attention and a part of you craved like being seen. And maybe that's what led you down this path of trying to find attention, whether it came from exposure from Fresh and Fit, whether it comes from like doing crazy stuff like kissing Nick Fuentes, on the cheek, but a part of you is kind of craving um, to be seen. Is 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 does that resonate with you at all? Um, I I mean, just not, like you said, not, like he, he's going to hear me. Yeah, but not seen in that that way because mm-hmm. I, I I also realize that um, I've I've ex, I've accepted. Um, the relationship, I, the relationships I've, I have with my parents, I accept mm-hmm. where I I am. For hmm, is that okay? I have to think about that because take your time. Not that type of attention. I, I the the attention that. Or, or, or wanting wanting to be seen, oh, wanting to be seen, um, and respected as a dope artist, because, like you said, it's it's not e- I, it's not easy to break the internet with authentic. Authenticity, yeah. Come on, thank you, That's thank you, fact. thank you. That's so, yeah. at some point, it's just like I don't mm. want to do like I don't I don't want to do this anymore because mm. I know that I'm dope, but nobody is accepting that because not even accepting that, but overlooking that because you got all these different shapes and images that like i i i just want to be seen for me like i don't want to be seen for being the the black the 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 representation of black people like not in like i I don't want to be the president i just want to be me it's simple for me like i i don't i don't i want to get the money and have my own and, and 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 live and live simple like i i but in order to do that I have to still engulf myself in all Give of this new age yeah. stuff. You get what I mean? I sound real right. old, but because I'm, right. I'm I'm not born in the internet era, it's still things that I have to learn. Uh, I have to still, it, it, it's always something you have to learn. Something you, you just grow. Right. It's, it's, it's growth. Um, and that, and, that, and that's Absolutely. it, but I don't, I don't, I don't want. I'm. I'm. I, I'm not a hot girl. I, I'm not a. This is not a hot girl. Summer for me. The hot girl. Summer for me is making sure my project gets done. The, the hot girl. Summer for me is just making sure that the relationship I have with my partner it stays. It is. It, 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 it's, it's, it's healthy. The the. Uh, you get what I'm saying? It's. It's. I'm. I'm not trying to be this. This Instagram model or this. No. I just want to be. Um, I want to get paid off of my gifts and 
and and what God gave me, I, I and I know that that I can. So, and, and what that looks like doesn't look like the Nicki Minaj and the in the Megans. I'm I'm I ain't I ain't regular, but like I'm I'm yeah. I'm what they call natural. But to to me, it's just I'm just me. I think, you know, one of the, the consequences of what happened to us as black folks, a lot of the things you see in like our personalities, the fact that we're, we're loud, we, we want to be seen, is because for so long we had been um, hidden, whether hidden, you know, on the plantation, whether hidden in our families, told to be quiet, told to be smaller. And I think we kind of rage against that by trying to be so colorful and bright and all that good stuff. And sometimes it's to our detriment because sometimes we end up involving ourselves with bullshit just because we're trying to fill that void of being seen, right? Everybody wants to be seen. Mm -hmm. As black folks, we've been told for so long that we're less than worth being seen, right? And, and this is why for me it's so important um, that our people get educated and, and understand some of these connections. Because people are thinking, oh, this thing that happened is an example of how black women are actually, uh, they're, they're, they're friends and they're, they're in cahoots with white supremacy and, and she loves Nick and all that good stuff. But there's really so much more going on behind the scenes. Like you said, you were caught off guard. Uh, you were trying to grow your project and you saw getting some exposure as better than getting no exposure, which led you to fresh and fit to be exploited. Um, and my goal is just for this to not happen to another you somewhere else. Um, did you have any questions for me? Anything that I can help clear up or any direction I could point you in? Um, and then, you know, it's, it's an hour and a half. I don't want to take up right, too much yeah. time. Right, um, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, but no, um, no, not, no, I don't really have any questions. Um, I am appreciative of you allowing me to come on your in, into your space um, and letting letting me be able to show who at least show who who, who I am. Um, right. I really ap appreciate the fact that we have a safe space like this um, to actually have conversation, um, mm -hmm. to actually, do, do you think we resolved anything? Like, do, uh, do did I, re, did, uh, like, what, did I make things clear? Um, mm -hmm. Was I clear enough? Because at the, at, I, I don't wanna talk no more. Like, I don't wanna talk about this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I, I don't think it's one of those things that one conversation can solve because I think it's bigger than you. I think unfortunately people are using you to project um, some of their anger. Like right now you represent and you have to kind of carry that. Um, but I, I do think number one, it was good for our people to see a black man and, and a black woman talk amicably. I think that's, we got an A plus for that. I think number two, it was good for black men to see accountability. You owned up to your wrongdoing. Um, I think that's powerful, especially in these internet spaces. Uh, but number three, I think it's, it's giving you some homework, right? Um, because for me, what's most important is that you don't find yourself in this situation again, whether because of clout, whether because of being unprepared, whether because of uh, going to a party you weren't really invited to. Um, so with those three things, I think this was a, uh, this was a W. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I appreciate Absolutely. that. No, thank, uh -huh. Listen, thank you for coming on. <laughs> if there's any time that you want to um, promote what it is that you're working on, um, instead of having to go to a fresh and fit, please just hit me up and uh, we'll work something out. But I appreciate you so much, Glow. Thank you so much, Alan, for having Absolutely. me on. Um, and everybody knows where to find me. I don't have Twitter. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't. I don't have Twitter only because when it first started, I didn't know what to do with it, so I just left it alone. Yeah. Um, but I do have the new Threads thing. 
it's my name <laughs> everything yeah. is my name um and that's about it for me mm. I think I really wanted, oh yes thank you for creating this space for us um because we need it we 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 definitely need it the most um mm -hmm. and that's it Absolutely. for me I, I think that we're done <laughs> thank, listen thank you so much have a good evening have a good weekend we'll talk you soon as well all right, all right. later Take later all right so i was trying to do my sound effects Maybe it's coming through for y'all. But um, I think that was productive. Um, like I said during the live stream, we have created and maintained an appetite for bullshit. And that's why we continue to see more bullshit. Um, and I think that only goes away when we start consolidating our attention and our support towards um, productive shit, right? Whether that's me, whether that's another YouTube content creator, but I think this is an opportunity for us to reflect. Obviously, she has to do her own reflection, but it's an opportunity for us to reflect on what we might subconsciously, unknowingly support, right? So if you're a black man and you are supporting Fresh and Fit, then you might want to um, rethink what you're doing um, if you're a black man and you're constantly clicking on videos talking about how black women are the devil's stepchildren, you might want to rethink what you're doing or what you're supporting. Um, I think it's also an opportunity for us to educate ourselves on our history, educate ourselves on the nuances of this race dynamic that we are caught in as global black folks, and more specifically, um, black people in America. Um, I want to appreciate our guest. I, I could tell she was nervous, you know, these internet streets, it's, uh, what's more normal is the Myron-esque, I'm going to show you how stupid you are, um, but, you know, that's not what we do here. So I appreciate y'all for your support. Again, support what you want to see more of because fame and infamy are the same exact thing these days. And uh, whether it's somebody you love or somebody you love to hate, you're supporting them just the same. So thank you for everybody who sent the cash app. Shout out to Elsie. Um, shout out to, let me see, the Hungry Millennial, welcome. Uh, Baba, welcome. I'm gonna just call you Wilson. Um, welcome. B. McCray, welcome. I appreciate it. Nimb, Keith, I uh, appreciate it. Um, thank y'all so much. Um, before I go, do y'all have any, any questions, anything that you wish we touched on? Any curiosities? You know, since I don't, I don't show my face as much anymore. Um, it's your opportunity. Let me give it like 15 minutes and then I'll be out. But also, I've been really obsessed with South African music recently. Um, just like the, the song that ended the uh, case study yesterday and the song that began this stream, I've played those things more times than I can count, just on repeat. There's something spiritual about it. And I think it also speaks to uh, that internal link that we all have. Because I'm not South African, I'm Nigerian. Um, but their music speaks to me, right? Um, but yeah, y'all, um, we need each other. Black men need black women, black women need black men, black people need each other. And that's why I call this, we need to talk. Because um, it all starts with communication. Um, the opposition makes its money and it maintains itself based on how terribly we cooperate with one another. So um, I hope this was an example of uh, speaking to people from what you think they can be, not necessarily what they are. Um, you can Google something called the Pyg Pygmalion effect. Apparently, if you address people as 
better than they actually are. Uh, people who actually uh, care about you and have the capacity to, if they're not damaged by some, you know, mental disorder, will try their best to live up to the, the light that you see them in. So I think we need to shine more of that light on our women, shine more of that light on our men. And I think we can uh, go in a good direction. Shay Sade, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. Music, uh, music was beautiful. Such a great conversation. Absolutely, absolutely. I, uh, I had notes, but I, to be honest, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what energy she'd be coming with, but I wanted to give her the, just like my other interviews, give her the latitude to show her full and authentic self. And then, you know, slowly peel back the layers. D. Davis, appreciate you, my brother. I saw the, um, the comments that you had. Appreciate you so much. He says, uh, would you ever have a conversation with Myron if given the chance or it's not productive slash a waste of time? That is a good ass question. Um, somebody asked me before the channel grew, they were like, yo, if you were invited on Fresh and Fit, would you go? At the time I was conflicted because, you know, what's the saying? Sometimes you got to play the game to change the game. And they have a massive audience and it would be exposure and an opportunity to grow the mission. But then, um, as you become, you know, as you grow in your content journey, you realize that, um, just like she said, all money ain't good money. And a good example of this is the Lapeef Network. Um, you know, some months ago, they started kind of falling apart. And you assume that the people from that network, not named Courtney Michelle, of course, would have been able to sustain their own audiences from the momentum of that, but that's not how it works because the audience was tuning in to watch them tap dance a certain way to a certain type of music. So they're not going with you somewhere else to hear you play jazz, right? Similarly, the fresh and fit audience is not interested in what I'm interested in. And ultimately, it would just be attention for the sake of attention, but it wouldn't move the needle for the cause that um, I'm actually passionate about. I am a black person who happens to be a man. They see themselves as men who happen to be black with a very superficial understanding of their, their place in the world. Um, or just, you know, are uninterested in facing reality or being a part of creating a better world. It's about being individualistic and maximizing whatever you see as a good life. But I think ultimately they're leading men to doom because um, even Myron, after all this, still can't pull women by himself. He has to coerce them into sleeping with him. So these aren't leaders. These aren't thought leaders. Um, so number one, the conversation that I would have there would be shallow at best. Number two, it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't help expand what it is that I'm trying to do. And I'm realizing just like she has that... Um, you, you, you don't belong in every space, right? And, and your voice, especially if it's valuable, uh, should not just be shared, or your space and your platform shouldn't be shared with everybody. So, nah, um, they can't do nothing for me, I can't do nothing for them. So that's not, that's not happening. Uh, but yeah, so um, matter of fact, let me I'm play another one that I've been playing on repeat. So we can close this out. But again, like I said, thank y'all. Oh yeah, this one. I've been playing this one on repeat. So yeah, I'm gonna play this one for y'all. Um, this is another South African, um, it's like a boys choir. It's just like a group of friends, but yeah, I've, I've played this more times than I want to admit. But y'all have a good evening. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Um, again, stay tuned to the channel. Click that video tab and see what's new. Um, and I appreciate y'all. Um, hit me up on Instagram. Hit me up in the community tab. Uh, hit me up by email. And peace.
Sonabile Sia Tandana Obazami Luzadu Kanisa Masureta Abba Panti Bagumile Upu Basifa Nele Hey. 